we will be placing one implant in missing site number 19. So step number one is I add a virtual crown at the missing site. And if I double click on the crown, I could change the position, angulation, and size of the crown. And after placing it in the most ideal position, in terms of angulation and position, click on OK and view it on the 3D, on the 3D view. I could still tweak it from this view by right click to change the angulation or left click and hold to change the position. So I try to place it in the most perfect position in relation to the adjacent teeth. Step number two is I open my implant library, choose uh, Strauman for this case, Strauman bone level, guided implants. I will choose the most suitable implant, let's say a 4.1 by 8, click on OK, and it's added perfectly below my virtual crown. Now I start with the cross section view. Again, right click and hold to change the angulation, left click and hold to change the position. Now, if I realize that the, the implant could be wider or longer, I could change it from a shortcut to make it longer and wider. So I made it a 4.8 by 10 and then I go to my tangential view where I can view the implant from all different angles 180 degrees all around I still tw tweak my crown on my implant to be in the most perfect position now the sockets are still visible so I'm gonna place the implant more or less in the previous sockets of uh, the previous uh, of the tooth Now let's say I try to use a longer implant, a 4.8 by 12. I get a warning at the bottom right that I'm too close to the nerve, so I will go back to a 4.8 by 10. And it seems like in the 3D view that it's placed in the center of the restorative space, mesodistally and buccolingually. So once I'm done with the plan, the next step is I add, uh, I register these toe models on the plan in order to fabricate a surgical guide. And finally, a surgical guide is fabricated by 3D Diagnostics compatible with the Strawman Computer Guide Kit.